Hello people, I know it's been a while since I've done videos, so I might as well at least do something. So welcome to Let's Play Spider-Man 2. So I have a bit of a history with this game as well, along with a bunch of other Spidey fans. A bunch of people would consider it the best Spidey game of all. I mean, some parts I can understand why, but there are also things that I can see in this game that, are, that have kind of aged poorly about it. So, let me explain. So, Spider-Man 2, my favorite superhero movie of all time, possibly one of my favorite movies of all time. I never really got around to playing the game, even though it the game actually came out on my birthday, 2004. And then the movie came, released in theaters the day after. I remember getting to see that the day after my birthday and such. But again, I never really got around to playing the game until a few years later because I didn't even have a PS2 or Xbox or GameCube. So I pretty much didn't have 7th gen consoles around 2004. Eventually I got a PlayStation 2 in 2005, but I still never got to play this game for a bit yet. I actually first played the PSP version of Spider-Man 2, which is not the same game as this. And it felt a little strange to like coming to that and then finally the next year playing the console version and realizing this is completely different from the PSP version. I was... And I kind of liked it, you know. Free roaming New York, swinging all around, controls completely tight and fluid, solid. And it was definitely a game that kept me coming back for days and days. I remember making it all the way to the final boss, but could never beat it <laughs> as a kid. So I can say this game holds some good memories, as well as a few other Spider-Man games. My f While my most favorite Spider-Man game is Web of Shadows, I can say that the one thing that 2 still holds up pretty well is the web swinging physics. They... They just make the most sense. Your web will attach to buildings and the direction... Where your web attaches will affect your direction. Lots of physics involved and... As well as taking a bit of... Geometry, or am I saying that right? I'm. I'm not that of a enthusiast at the subjects. But you had a lot of control with zipping, crawling, you can even do loop -de loops on a web. Like, you had potential to learn some tricks with the web swinging, and that is something I can still appreciate about this game, is that, like, you would at least, is that you at least have to learn the web swinging, and then once you get it down, it'll feel natural. Well, future Spider-Man games completely simplified the web swinging mechanic. Even... I... S I even prefer this one over PS4 Spider-Man in terms of web swinging. I mean, I mean, it still feels right in a lot of places while at the same time it feels heavier compared to this. So as you can, so as much as I can say is that for an origin to the sandbox Spider-Man game, it really took a very serious approach with traverse, traversal and exploration. 
they really took it seriously in development, while every other Spider-Man game after that basically took inspiration as well as dumbing down some of it to feel more streamlined. That was all three of the demos, and I think I'm done talking about it. So, normal swinging, full manual control for maximum precision. Alright, so, this is what's also interesting, you can choose your swinging mechanics. One button swing released with automatic swing jumping. This basically means that you're holding the the right trigger to, to web swinging, and then when you let go, he'll jump out of it. While compared to normal swinging in this game, you tap the right trigger, and then the web will attach to a building or an object and such. And then, you know, he'll hold on to it until you jump out of it manually with the jump button. And then every other Spider-Man game after that just went down to the easy swing of holding the, the trigger. Alright, let's get into it. Sequel time already, huh? Welcome back, I guess. I'm sure you missed me more than I missed you. Anyway, things have changed around here since last time, so they dragged me back at great expense to explain what's up. First things first. You're not much of a wall crawler if you can't, you know, stick to walls. So here's what you do. You walk or run into a wall and hold the grab button. Voila! You stick to the wall. It works when you're swinging or jumping, too. Moving right along, let's talk jumping. Hold down the jump button and you'll charge your jump. This yellow bar shows how strong your jump will be when you let go of the button. You got it? You sure? You don't actually jump until you've let go of the jump button. Okay? Now go jump in a lake. If you tap the jump button, you'll just do a little hop. A little, a little hop. 
That's because you didn't charge your jump. Am I going too fast for you? Let's get this show on the road. See that little doohickey? That's your destination marker, and it tells you how to get where you need to go. Clever, huh? When it's in the middle of the screen, you know you're heading towards your goal. Easy, right? All right, stop there for a second and look at your map. See it there? That red thing in the center is you, and the blue dot is your destination marker. The line that connects each dot to the map represents how high off the ground that particular thing is. Oh, that makes sense, right? <laughs> oh, sure it does. All right, now that Bruce Campbell was done narrating, I should start by changing the camera controls. Alright. Let me see if I can get him to do the dying thing. Well, I'm not sure how you managed to die. I mean, seriously, unless you're a professional game tester, there's no reason for you to be dying yet. Oh, and if you are a professional game tester, well, good job. Keep up the good work, of course. Much appreciated, Bruce. You can jump the gap between these two towers by charging your jump. Charge jumping is easy and fun. You should be doing it all the time. Seriously. So these are hint markers. They're all over the city. I'm sure that will be explained a little later. So, chapter one isn't really Once much. You that blue destination marker, I'll let you loose on the city. Or I'll give you a lollipop, I haven't decided yet. So anyway, this is basically the introduction for Let's Play Spider-Man 2. Chapter 1 will actually end once I touch this. <laughs> so, it's... I don't know. But I feel I should just... You know what, fuck it, I'll do one and two in, in a whole video. And every chapter opens with one of these nifty little slow-mo things. Those words zipping by under the chapter title are the items on your to-do list. So get busy. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do is jump off the building. I mean, just jump. Hey, I wouldn't tell you to do something dangerous and life-threatening, would I? Come on. You always do what people tell you. You know, there's a word for that. Loser. So what now, wise guy? Great, you made it. Now let me tell you a little about swing. Every time you press the swing button, you'll shoot a new web line. Now there's all kinds of fancy stuff you can do, but let's do baby steps. Now that you're out and about, why don't you swing around for a while? You know, do your thing. I'll check up on you later. You're fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Alright, so as you progress through the game, you're given a to-do list on what you should do in order to complete the chapter. Why did I say chapter? So, there are hint markers scattered all throughout the city. There are hundreds of them. The tips he can give you can range from something you might learn already or something you didn't know. It's not easy to tell what hints you're going to get until you're already completely familiar with the game, which I'm not that very invested okay, with it. Okay, I'm back. For the next lesson, let's talk about... Hey, what's going on down there? Stop, well, that's convenient. The arcade just got held up and the robbers are driving away. What are you going to do about it? It's like playtime is over. Put all the stuff you've learned together and get into action. 
swing after the car. Use the destination marker in your map to lose it. Oh, and try not to embarrass yourself, okay? Looks like the robbers are escaping on foot. Go teach them about just, you know, by beating the snot on them. I mean, this isn't a civics class. What do you expect? Want to see something cool? Sprint after that last robber by holding the sprint trigger while you run, and hold attack when you get up to the thug. That move is called a sprint. Spider-Man just showed up. Nice going. Now get back to the arcade. Room. You know you should check out some of the games you got too. Thanks, Spider-Man. Listen, if you ever want to play some games, come on by. It's on the house. Bring up your zoom map for a second, would you? Great. This map is real useful. You can see destination markers and all kinds of other useful locations on it. Check it out when you get lost. But you'll never get lost. I know you. Alright, so... As this is one of more of the early era sandbox games, next to PS2 era GTA, you're given a live, real-time, full-scale city to swing around. And the way the map works in this one is you're getting to see where a lot of stuff is located, from challenges to special places to go to. And yes, you're even given locations for the hint markers. What's also interesting, if you see some of those yellow, tiny yellow flashes up there on some of the buildings, not talking about the cars, but I mean on top of the roofs, those are tokens, and you'll have to pay close attention to the map if you're scavenging for them. There are multiple methods that you can choose to progress in terms of chapters that require hero points to complete. Right now that's not important, but we'll get to that later. There's no waypoint system, so you'll have to be going back to the map every on and on to be sure you're heading to the right place. Story objectives have their own waypoints, but for the optional stuff, you get the picture by now. A destination marker for the first Spidey store just appeared. Go buy the speed upgrade, then we'll move on. And if you won't, then I'm done. Now this is the only upgrade we can buy at this point. As you progress through the story, there will be some attacks that you're required to purchase so that you're capable of doing the means necessary for a later mission, stuff and stuff. But at the moment we buy this, it will be the end of chapter 2. Or in, and it'll also be the end of the tutorial, which means the real game will begin as soon as I press purchase. So thanks, and I'll see you in chapter 3.